So I believe that it's uh, the time that uh, our, will, our event will uh, start. Um, let me again introduce myself for, for those that haven't uh, joined before. Uh, my name is Eleftherios Zunoglu. Uh, I'm a senior researcher at Institute of uh, Communication and Computer Systems, uh, which is the uh, coordinating institute of uh, the CyberMap project. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining this uh, really significant for, for uh, our consortium event, our first uh, pilot. Uh, just to inform you uh, as uh, an introduction that according to the plan that we had in the context of uh, our uh, project, this uh, pilot event uh, was planned to be held uh, in Valencia. Uh, however, due to the, the, the difficult situation that we are all facing, uh, we had to, to change our plans and uh, now this uh, event uh, is uh, held uh, virtually through uh, a teleconference. However, we uh, did our best in order to uh, uh, organize it in a way that uh, will allow us to, to demonstrate the, uh, uh, the functionalities of the system, what has been uh, uh, developed up to now. And uh, we hope that uh, we will receive uh, important feedback for uh, uh, the, the event participants that will uh, help us uh, proceed to the next steps of, uh, of our project. Um, so let me uh, firstly start with uh, some uh, basic uh, meeting rules in order for, for the event to uh, progress uh, efficiently and also to be sure that all the uh, regulations regarding uh, uh, handling uh, personal information, uh, etc., will be uh, uh, in place. Uh, please let me inform you that uh, the event will be recorded, uh, as uh, was announced also from the platform. Um, all the microphones and cameras uh, will be kept uh, off, so uh, you uh, don't have the ability to uh, switch on your microphone or your camera or share your screen uh, without these being uh, uh, allowed by uh, a host of the meeting. Uh, however, in order to be able to receive your questions and your feedback, uh, we would propose that the chat functionality will be used. Uh, and in order for these to be moderated in the, in the best way, uh, we uh, selected that uh, the participants of the event will be able to send messages uh, only to, to hosts or co-hosts. Um, so in the case that you have any question or comment uh, during a, uh, any presentation or during the demonstration or in the uh, questions and answers session that we are going to have, uh, please send any of them uh, to Vasiliki Pala. You can select in your chat window uh, to, to send a message to, to her. Uh, she will uh, quickly uh, check the, the content of the message just to be sure that uh, uh, the, the content is the proper for, for this event and uh, she will immediately then uh, forward it to everyone in order to be able to discuss about these uh, question and comments by uh, asking you to uh, unmute your microphone in order to also have uh, a live discussion if needed. Uh, thank you very much in advance for, for your cooperation on that and uh, we, will, uh, we hope that uh, you will enjoy what we are going to, to demonstrate. You will find uh, interesting and uh, we are looking forward to receiving your important feedback. Uh, the agenda of the event is the following. Uh, I will start with uh, a quick overview of the CyberMap project and also I uh, will uh, present some benefits that we identify uh, that uh, can be uh, given to uh, an organization or individuals that would uh, use the, the CyberMap platform. Uh, after that, 
uh, a presentation of the cyber architecture and the technical modules that are being developed uh, will uh, follow. Uh, then uh, a description of the pilot that will be uh, 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 realized uh, will be done in order to give all the details and explain all the steps that will be demonstrated afterwards. And uh, also a presentation about the, the infrastructure that will be used today in order for uh, any participant to be able to have a, a uh, a better picture, let's say, of uh, what will be demonstrated and the way that this will be demonstrated. And after that, for an hour, about an hour, uh, the, the pilot execution will, uh, uh, will take place. And uh, we will have also 45 minutes for questions and uh, feedback. Um, also, we will uh, circulate to all the participants uh, a questionnaire uh, through which we are looking forward to, to receive your, your feedback. Uh, and uh, this will be shared uh, uh, through the, the chat. So let me start with uh, an overview of the CyberMar project. Uh, the full title of the project is uh, Cyber Preparedness Actions for a Holistic Approach and Awareness Raising. Uh, in the uh, maritime logistics supply chain. Uh, the topic through which uh, our project has been funded was uh, the SUDS 2018 uh, with the topic title Cybersecurity Preparedness, Cyber Range, Simulation and Economics. The authority of the contracting is the European Commission and specifically the Horizon 2020 framework. Um, the, the funded scheme is an innovation action and we started at uh, September 2019 and the, the, the programmed end of the project is uh, at the end of the August of uh, 2022. Uh, the overall uh, cost, let's say, the, the budget of the, of the project is almost uh, 7 million euros and the contribution of uh, European Commission to that is uh, about uh, 6 million euros. And as I said before, the, the coordination uh, is uh, held by the Institute of Communication and Computer System um, uh, from Greece, uh, which is an institute of the National Technical University of Athens. Uh, the main challenge is now and the goals that uh, the CyberMar project has. Uh, we know that uh, the maritime information systems, in many cases, uh, are designed without accounting for the cyber risk. And uh, a fact is that uh, the digital infrastructure has become essential and critical to the safety and security of shipping and ports. Um, we also uh, believe and it is widely uh, accepted that it is important uh, to, to handle cyber preparedness as a highly uh, priority, as a high priority. And uh, also uh, it is uh, really important for, for all uh, organizations, uh, businesses involved in the maritime domain to be able to estimate in an accurate way the cybersecurity investments that uh, have to do uh, but this to be done based on valid risk and econometric models. So the ultimate goals of our project, the CyberMar project, uh, unfolds in two main directions. Firstly, to uh, establish a cyber ecosystem for preparing of cyber attacks, and also to estimate the impact of uh, cyber attacks from a financial perspective and supporting the undertaking of prompt decisions. Uh, we have uh, defined uh, five main objectives for our project, starting with the first, which is to enhance the capabilities of cybersecurity pr professionals and raise awareness on cyber risks. And this will be done by deploying a cyber, the cyber, uh, cyber range uh, using training models through uh, learning uh, management systems and uh, targeting to improve the response time in specific resilience metrics. Uh, 
the second objective is to assess cyber risks for the operational technologies. And uh, here, a maritime cyber risk assessment will be deployed and integrated into the CyberMark platform. The third objective is to quantify the economic impact of cyber attacks across different industries with a focus on port disruption. And uh, in this context, solutions to quantify the economic risk in terms of uh, time to recover or product failure at risk will be integrated in the CyberMark platform. Uh, the fourth objective is to promote cyber insurance market maturity in the maritime logistics sector, but also we uh, work in a way that will allow these uh, uh, results to be adaptable to other transport sectors as well. And uh, this will be done through developing recommendations based on findings and outcomes from cyber pilots and simulations, uh, like the one that we uh, uh, we uh, present today. And the fifth objective is to establish and extend certain C certs uh, networks, uh, competent authorities, and relevant actors' collaboration and engagement. And our uh, uh, main uh, target, let's say, is to create a maritime malware information sharing platform community. Uh, specifically for uh, for cyber uh, to be connected with uh, other communities and also uh, engage at least two uh, search and see search in the, uh, these pilot activities and the pilot activities to be held in the future. Um, the main concept, let's say, in the methodology to, to be followed uh, takes advantage of uh, a cyber range environment and uh, adopts a three-tiered approach. Uh, in the first uh, tire is the uh, is people uh, through which we propose that continuous training uh, through involvement in pilots, training sessions, and uh, uh, familiarize people with uh, CyberMark platform will support uh, our uh, objectives. Uh, the second tire is uh, procedures uh, uh, related to measuring. Uh, 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 uncover areas for improving and deficiencies in current procedures followed. And the third tier is technologies that uh, our platform uh, could allow new technologies to, uh, to be tested and also uh, to identify complex vulnerabilities uh, in the uh, complex and uh, uh, sophisticated systems that are used in, uh, in this domain. Uh, for the pilot scenarios now, we have three pilot scenarios to, to be uh, executed in the context of the, uh, of the project. Uh, the first one is realized today and has to do with energy sources in the port of Valencia. Uh, in order to simulate the port electrical grid of the, of the port, and uh, this will include protocols for protecting the grid and crisis management after the attack. The second uh, will be uh, uh, focused on na vessel navigation and automation system. Uh, and the platform will be applied to simulate a ship bridge cyber attack, including potential attacks to navigation, communication, and control systems. And the third uh, pilot uh, is uh, related to the SCADA system in a, a port container terminal. And the platform will be applied in order to simulate a SCADA attack to the port container terminal of uh, Piraeus port. And also the consequences of uh, a cascade effect extending the attack to the railway operator will be also uh, studied. The approach and the methodology of the CyberMA demonstration activities uh, includes three distinct phases and will uh, last for uh, about uh, 15 months uh, in duration. The first phase uh, is demonstrated uh, today and focuses on the interconnection of legacy infrastructure with uh, the cyber, cyber range. And also the, the next phases, uh, the second phase is related to the addition of uh, high TRL uh, uh, components 
that uh, are uh, integrated and included in the uh, in the solution in the CyberMars solution. And the third phase will demonstrate uh, the, the full integration of all the components, including those that are now developed in the context of the project. The expected impacts now uh, are related to four different categories. Uh, the one is related to the impact that we expect that our project results will have on resilience to cyber threats and data privacy uh, breaches. Uh, also, we identify a significant impact on supply chain efficiency, uh, significant impact on appropriate investments for cybersecurity, and also a societal impact through uh, the, the training infrastructures to, to be developed uh, in the context of the project, but also through standardization efforts that are, are are held in the context of the project. The target audience now that we identify for, for our uh, activities uh, are decision makers, public authorities, and international organizations, uh, the academia, port authorities, operators, and associations, uh, freight transport and logistic actors, definitely the CERT and C-CERT network, uh, insurance, shipping, and cybersecurity companies and enterprises, and finally, European and international organization and networks for cybersecurity. And uh, as I said before, we uh, identify some benefits of using this platform, uh, and we believe that by adopting a platform like Cybermar can have multiple benefits for an organization at multiple levels of operation and for different categories of members. For example, for, for the employees of uh, an organization, they would be able to experience real world uh, threats in a safe environment, however, uh, to learn how to recognize these threats and to develop and expand uh, cybersecurity skills. For a security operator, um, such a platform could uh, allow to transfer information from the cyber range for immediate use. Things to be tested in a cyber range uh, uh, can be immediately uh, transferred to uh, the, the tools and the infrastructure used for protecting uh, uh, an organization. To measure knowledge and capabilities of internal or external cybersecurity teams, to raise awareness either uh, regarding technical issues or in a high level, to uh, realize penetration testing exercises, and to simulate real threat actor uh, scenarios and learn from them. Uh, for the management of the organization, uh, definitely the benefits is uh, the, uh, adopting such a platform could allow uh, keeping the employees trained and improve the overall cybersecurity education. Uh, also would allow the security assessments to be held in general and also to be able to test processes and technologies before taking any decisions. Um, and finally, to be able to evaluate cyber risk based also on the economic impact and be able to take cost-effective decisions. And finally, for uh, the research and development uh, departments or for the academia, such a platform could uh, allow to design and build prototypes um, and test beds for technologies and also to uh, uh, set experimental environments. And this would allow even more applications, including uh, IoT, robotics, smart grids, big data applications, etc., and being able to test them against cyber attacks. And finally, to be able to design, develop, and test new tools and methods for cybersecurity, as I said, in a safe environment and fully controlled environment. Thank you very much for, for your attention, and thank you very much for, for joining the uh, this event. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, you will find interesting the, uh, the presentations that will follow. And I would like to give the floor to my colleague, uh, Eimerick, 
from uh, uh, Naval Group in order to present the, the whole uh, CyberMar architecture and uh, give you some more details about the components that are being developed. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. It's all right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Emeric Nicola. I'm the technical coordinator of Cyberma. I'm from Naval Group France, and I'm pleased to present the global architecture and the main technical modules of Cybermart project. This presentation is developed in two main chapters. We will enable to understand how to work all components of Cybermart and how the partners have synergized their work. First of all, we will start by presenting the global architecture to understand how to the project work. Here is the global CyberMar architecture diagram. For a simple understanding, I have simplified the diagram just with two types of flow, API call and network stream. All CyberMar work. At the beginning, we define the topology we want to reproduce. We will implement this it in the macro framework. The dia DIAS team cyber range grant an any 80 or OT virtual machine, it can be also interconnect with real machine in the device, the device in the cyber range. After that, we inject the parameter of the economic model, model and in the recommendation engine for our simulation. And finally, the MIS module provides some cyber threat of the maritime world with the data collect with any CERT and CERT partners. And now we are ready to start the simulation. The topology are monitored in real time by some tools, ADS and some CM check the status of all machines and check the data over the network in the real time. Students and trainers can interact with the simulation through a graphical user interface via remote view. And the LMS module can give tips and prepare to counter type of scenario. On this slide, we can see here the contribution of each partner, and you can understand the interaction between offer, offer, ah, all of us and understand the synergy of each skill. For a better understanding of each component, we'll describe quickly the behavior of each component in order to simplify uh, to the understanding and not to be lost in the architecture each slide is accompanied by a thumbnail allowing to know where is the module in the global architecture first of all the architect the orchestrator is the main component of the cyber mass system is control all of the modular components and communicate with them via an api apa this module is acts like the, uh, this module acts like a conductor. It takes care of synchronization of all the components of the CyberMart project. It receives the state of all of the components and adjusts the direction of the simulation. This component is the, the main connection between the student and the simulation. This module is the main uh, the main cyber range of CyberMart. Uh, this, this can create and manage any kind of virtual environment, have the capability to connect the simulation and the, with the real world by uh, the network uh, flow. We can reproduce any kind of port, can interact with them, and understand the, any, the, the effect of any virus or any cyber risk possible. Except the VTT, VTT provides a collection of open source network monitor, for monitoring tools. Uh, some of modules uh, can take uh, can give some alerts uh, with the uh, with the, some 
some uh, some kind of uh, tools uh, can uh, give uh, some alerts and give a clear dashboard of the situation. They can detect and eventually capture evidence of one cyber attack with a PCAP uh, file. And the, the VTT tools give the LMS uh, modules. It's uh, the learning management system. They can divide in a two, uh, two possibilities. One for the technical aspect is uh, create to train and defend the cyber threat and eventually counter attack. And one for either level profile to understand the economical impact of a cyber attack and can help to take a nice decision in the case of crisis. The recommendation engine control, uh, concentrate a lot of data. It's take in input from, from many, uh, many modules. It take uh, the top port topology, then take the network traffic, the MISP data, and also the scenario actually you run. It calculates in real time the consequences of an attack and the damage inflicted by it. The economic model is the component used to give the economical impact of one scenario. As you see, this module takes a lot of data in input. They can take the scenario parameters, deter determine what kind of user or students use the simulation. The economic models can compute any type of loss, downtime of the port estimation, the cost of the lost equipment. The main purpose of this module is to take students aware of the risk of cyber attack. The student can be trained to reduce the loss and or protect from poten potentially attack. This module can be, can be divided into. The first part are the same. It creates all of security events and give, give by the IDS uh, probe and can give the scenario statement of all machine of the scenarios. And the second one is the ADS, who check in real time the network flow and can identify some machine who are infected and require to be cleaned for the simulation. The MIS module is the main module for the connection of the CyberMath project and any CERT and CERT partners. It provides vulnerability and technical data that are used in the, uh, in the maritime world and provide uh, real data for the students to have a concrete case and also make it possible to train against malicious campaigns that are currently in progress uh, The micro module is a module to determine the topology. We configure the machine we want to use in our pilot, as well as the, the, the operating scenario we want to use, and also to take the variability to wish to use. This module will calculate the risk profile of each component and make an estimation of the impact of the vulnerability in our entire installation. When it's done, they are transferred to the other module that will use this for the real time. All pilots uh, CBMR are divided in three pilots. The you were in the first. Any of them implement a new component and new type of interaction. Here for Valencia, we use uh, it's um, uh, more act uh, the the acts, the main acts are on uh, energy sources. Pyrus uh, implement more modules focused to the SCADA and containers the terminal. And the last one is a ship simulator to directly understand what kind of attack we have directly uh, on a boat. Actually, we are in the Valencia first pilot and you are just after my presentation, we have a demonstration of the capability of the CyberMap project offered despite the absence of a uh, any uh, module. Thank you uh, for your attention. Let me start the demonstration to understand what CyberMars is actually capable. Thank you, I'm ready. 
now that, that this is uh, Pablo Jiménez from Fundación Valencia Port. Now that you have seen uh, an overview of the CyberMar project, I would like to show you the, the scenario where uh, we are going to run this uh, demonstration. Starting from, okay, starting from an introduction of the situation. Uh, this scenario is based on the communication network of the electrical grid in the port of Valencia, where, as you can understand, there are several systems and equipment deployed throughout the port, as in any uh, industrial uh, infrastructure. And in this case, uh, we have also other companies uh, which are based on the port premises, like uh, uh, terminals, we have a warehouse, we have logistic uh, companies, so they also need uh, power. So we can say that power is an essential service to maintain the port activity. And the port authority, as the energy provider within the port, they need to protect the, the infrastructure against any kind of uh, cyber attacks. And which is the objective of this scenario? We want to assess the, the electrical grid system in order to adapt it and be prepared to avoid any kind of cyber attack or at, at least most of them. We want also to be, be prepared to mitigate and restore the system in case we have uh, an attack. And this is quite related to the next point that is training for the personnel in the, in the companies in order to uh, provide them the cyber threat skills and quick response in case the, there is an emergency. We want also, uh, of course, test all the components that we are developing in the CyberMart project. And this is the high level view architecture of this scenario. As you can see, all the components in the, in the smart grid are controlled by a SCADA system that it is on the top. And there is a uh, fiber, optical fiber communication ring connecting all the transformers in the network. And from each of them, uh, there is one, one or more equipment or systems and at least one PLC in order to control that equipment and one meter to measure the consumption. This network is completely isolated from other networks and from internet and uh, only uh, the OT manager and his team has access in order to monitor and update the system. In this uh, architecture, we are going to run a cyber attack that in order to compromise the, the infrastructure. And it will start with a phishing email to gain access to the computer of the OT manager. With this uh, access, then all the computers and servers in the networks will be infected and ransomed. And with this access, uh, the attackers will go to the SCADA system and reprogram some PLCs in order to cut the power. This is only uh, an overview. In next presentations, my colleagues will show you in detail, step by step, what is going to happen. And before finish, I would like to show you some figures about this kind of cyber attacks. As you can see in ransomware attacks, most of the entry points are the remote desktop protocols. More of them, more, most of them, half of them at least. But as you can see, Phishing emails are used also in 26% of the, of the attacks. In, this case, in these situations, when you pay most times with Bitcoins, you can recover most of your systems or your, your files. But you can see the most interesting figure is that the average downtime for your systems could be uh, 16 days. That in a critical infrastructure like the port could be a, a big problem. Also, some other figures about the vulnerabilities. So in the report from Clarity this year, you can see that in industrial control systems, there are uh, several known vulnerabilities. And you can see that high, the half of them has a high impact. So it's really important to have updated all our systems in order to avoid at least known vulnerabilities. Also, you can see that uh, most of the, vernos, of the vendors are affected for these vulnerabilities, so we should be prepared for them. 
And now my colleague Jan Baptiste from Dayatin is going to show you the infrastructure where uh, this uh, architecture has been deployed. Ok. Bah, du coup, euh, tu peux y aller. So... We cannot hear you. Okay, you can hear Okay, you can Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, I'm Jean-Mathis Mo from Daya Team and I'm also uh, the Innovation Manager in the CyberMark project. Um, so, who is Daya Team? Uh, we are a French private R&D company. Uh, we are founded in 2002 on the French uh, MOD needs. Uh, we are based in Brest, in France. Um, Back in 2002, the MOD needed a platform to simulate complex IT systems to do uh, some prototyping and testing. Uh, and so this is how we, we began working on what we call today our CyberRange solution. So we are both uh, CyberRange editor, uh, which means we are developing the CyberRange engine, and also uh, a cyber content provider. Uh, so we also uh, provide some uh, services and custom scenarios uh, to go with the range. As you can see on uh, this map, um, we have a, a worldwide cybersecurity skill shortage of more than 3 million people. Uh, in Europe, uh, this gap has increased by more than 20,000 uh, in two years, and it is now around uh, 170k, uh, we miss 170k people. Um, it is a challenge for both professionals and universities to fill this gap. On the other hand, there is no shortage of cybersecurity equipment. Cybersecurity is a chain of processes in which humans play a decisive role. Contrary to popular belief, we do not consider humans to be the weakest link, but the solution to cybersecurity. People are one of the best defense against threats, as long as they are able to organize themselves and cooperate as a team. To reinforce this human firewall, we are convinced that learning by doing is an essential, essential requirement for any organization that claims to protect its information assets. This is why we've been developing a hybrid cyber range for more than 10 years now. So what's a cyber range? Basically, it's a flight simulator for cyber defenders. Uh, using a cyber range, you can reproduce realistic virtual IT and OT infrastructures and do everything you want to do with them. We call it hybrid because we are able to connect real equipment to the real world using dedicated network interfaces, as uh, we will see later during our demonst demonstration. Um, the specific use case you can show, uh, you can see here, um, is what we call a red team versus blue team exercise. 
Um, well, we use the platform, CyberRange platform, to simulate any IT or OT network. Uh, we then have a blue team, which are cyber defenders uh, connecting uh, using hybrid connection to the platform. On the other hand, on the right side of the picture, you can see we also have a red team, which is connected to the platform. Uh, these people will attack the simulated system uh, using real attacks, and the blue team is trying to defend the system. Uh, at the bottom of the picture, you can also see uh, we can add some uh, traffic generation, uh, be it legitimate or malicious. Uh, which allows us to, to do more uh, realistic uh, simulations and scenarios. So what, what can you do with the cyber range? Um, we, we can see here three main categories of use cases. Uh, the first one is what we call cyber training center. Um, so as we said before, um, we believe uh, Hands-on learning is uh, is the key. So with the cyber range, you can do everything uh, related to cyber training, be it awareness, uh, cyber training itself. For example, if you want to uh, to train some SOC operator or analyst or things like that, and you can of course do uh, complex uh, exercise and cyber crisis uh, management. The second category of use cases is what we call the labs solutions. Um, so you can use the range to do, uh, for example, deployment testing, benchmarking. Uh, you can also use it to do some prototyping or pen testing, or for example, do some patch, ma patch management. So for this specific use case, you, you reproduce uh, all or part of your virtual infrastructure, for example, um, uh, something we, we call today a, a digital twin. And you can then, uh, once a, a new patch is available, you can uh, apply it in the simulated infrastructure and then uh, do all your tests. And once uh, everything is good, you can then apply the same patch on your real system. Uh, and finally, you can, of course, uh, use it to fill the workforce gap. So a cyber range can be used for education, uh, not only for cyber security, but also for uh, any um, IT uh, training, uh, for example, to, to train some uh, uh, system administrators to, to learn how to configure systems and so on. Um, you can also use it for your recruitment uh, if you need to assess the skills of uh, potential collaborate, collaborators, sorry. Um, and you can also use it for certification uh, by providing uh, some custom playground uh, to play. So, um, well, you can do many things uh, as, we, with, as we saw with the cyber range and for that, we have many features. Well, the first one, of course, is uh, virtualization, emulation, and simulation of complex IT and OT network. Um, the hybrid feature, which we already talked about, which allows to connect real equipment to the simulation, because sometimes you cannot uh, virtualize or emulate or simulate uh, some systems. Uh, we'll see uh, later that we use uh, in this demonstration, in the next demonstration, we use hybrid to connect some real uh, OT systems, uh, uh, PLCs in, uh, in our specific case. Uh, so our range is really easy to use. Um, and uh, it has, uh, as you will see later, uh, user friendly HMI. The idea is that you do not have you do not have to be an expert in virtualization, emulation, and simulation. Um, you need to concentrate on your own uh, work. So it's really easy to create new infrastructures, add virtual machines, interconnect them, and then start playing with the platform. 
it's multi-architecture, which means uh, you can have um, multiple simultaneous uh, virtual infrastructures running at the same time. You can, of course, have multiple users connected at the same time. And it's also multi-view, uh, which means you can switch uh, between uh, remote displays and so on. Um, a few a few other features uh, which are uh, useful during trainings or during prototyping. You can do some network capture at any point in the virtual infrastructures. You can do some USB redirection, so you can share real USB devices uh, within the, the virtual infrastructures. Um, you can also do some uh, memory dumps of virtual machines. Uh, which is useful if, if you are doing some uh, forensic training, for example. And last but not least, uh, the platform is fully automatable through APIs, which means that you, you will, for example, use uh, the HMI to prepare uh, your virtual infrastructures and your scenarios. And then um, let's say you have 10 or 20 people to train uh, you, you can use the platform API to clone uh, 12 times uh, the same virtual infrastructure. It will take only a few seconds. And then you can also, using the API, start everything. And then your student can play with it. You do your training, let's say for two, three hours. And once it's done, using the API, you can also remove everything and you're ready to restart and, uh, and do another training session. So now that we've seen what our range uh, can do, I let uh, my colleague uh, Jonathan uh, give us some details about uh, the demonstration and he will also uh, do the demonstration itself. Thank you for your attention. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan Winterflood. I'll be taking over from now. Can everyone still hear me? Yes. Perfect. So first, uh, I'll show you the, uh, the hardware we are, we are running on today. Uh, we have uh, built a, uh, an iteration of our uh, hybrid cyber range uh, with uh, three servers uh, for up to 108 cores, uh, 760 gigabytes of RAM. It has a 10 gigabit Ethernet internal network for high performance and 16 hybrid ports for connecting the external uh, hardware and in this case, PLCs. Uh, I'll quickly show you on the other camera. Yeah, if you can... Okay. It's, uh, it makes a lot of feedback. Anyways, um, so... Uh, for me to see this one first. Okay, if you can hear me and the camera has moved to the, to the other camera, you can see here we have the, uh, the range we're using today. And on the other side here, we have a physical, physical PLC that we'll be attacking uh, during the demonstration. Okay, moving on. Uh, so uh, this is the targeted topology that we have built uh, based on the uh, uh, scenario uh, for the valence report. And so we have not rebuilt exactly the same uh, network as in the, uh, the port of Valencia for security reasons and for simplicity. Uh, but we have still a, a realistic uh, Windows uh, network uh, for the uh, with the uh, servers for the network, the users uh, 
uh, um, the two have their machines in the network and the uh, DMZ uh, for uh, web servers and uh, email servers, for example, for exterior contact. Um, I will show this later in the uh, in our uh, user interface for the, the cyber range. On the right hand side, we have also reproduced uh, the uh, OT network. Uh, so we have the uh, supervision for the, uh, the OT uh, systems. Uh, we have the uh, uh, physical policy that we will be attacking today, which is used for the, uh, the main substation uh, supplying uh, 20,000 volts to the port. And we also have the other um, uh, other PLCs distributed throughout the ports, which are handling the um, simulated uh, uh, transformers for low voltage, such as 400 uh, volts and 200 volts. There's also the monitoring of the network, uh, which is in this area here. Uh, which is the uh, IDS and the CM modules, which will be explained later. Finally, uh, the, the network is connected to a simulated internet, uh, which is where the attackers were created during the demonstration. Okay, so. A quick overview of the uh, of the network again in the uh, user interface for the for the range. So we have here the servers for the network, the user machines in the network, the DMZ, the main uh, firewall for the for the network, which gives access to internet and to uh, handles the communication between the different segments in the network. The uh, OT uh, part of the network is on this side with the supervision machine here and the uh, substation physical PLC connected uh, here and the virtual uh, PLCs for the other systems throughout the port. The monitoring network is shown here. As we mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, system allows the simulation of several net, uh, architectures at the same time. And in this case, we have connected these uh, monitoring systems in a separate network. Moving on, uh, going into detail about the, the servers in the system, I'll talk now about the domain controller or active directory. So, in a Windows network, the holy grail for an, att an attacker is the active directory or domain controller. Uh, an administrator on the domain controller can perform any act on any machine in the Windows network, such as manage accounts and passwords, and remotely execute software immediately on any other machine in the, in the system, or currently the group policy object. These are uh, legitimate normal use cases for the Active Directory, uh, which are used to manage the, uh, uh, the entity's uh, network during normal operations. However, if an attacker were to gain access to the Active Directory, they could perform any action on any machine on the, in the network as well. Obviously, this is a very bad thing to happen. <laughs> we'll now have a closer look at the uh, monitoring tools uh, by uh, VTT and Atos, which I'll just show you quickly where they are located in the network again. In the global network, we have uh, the monitoring tools, which are here, and more precisely, the IDS by VTT here, and CM here. We'll move on now to the uh, uh, explanation of the IDS 
by Mitsutish. Uh, good morning. This is Jukilku from uh, VTT, Technical Research Center of Finland. Um, we have this IDS system uh, deployed, so intrusion detection system, deployed uh, within the network uh, to monitor the network traffic and uh, give alerts to the system administration on security incidents and uh, other suspicious suspicious uh, events on the network. Uh, could you change the slide? So uh, this is typically something that in, in a cyber range uh, training exercise uh, the blue team would be doing. Uh, we have four sensors uh, in the network, uh, both in the IT and the OT networks there are sensors, so we ca capture most of the traffic and most of the events that are happening there. Uh, the intrusion detection system inspects all the traffic according to a certain set of rules that we have defined uh, to find uh, potential malicious events. Uh, these rules are, for example, uh, signatures of previously detected uh, vulnerabilities or uh, security incidents. And they can be, for example, uh, signatures that de uh, define uh, certain offsets in network packets that contain bytes that are usually uh, related to one such attack. Mm, and, and the signatures or the rules, they are in general shared uh, within the security community as part of threat intelligence. Uh, when one of these rules fires, so something is detected, uh, the idea system generates an event and uh, sends it uh, to the uh, security information and event management system, CM, uh, for further analysis and aggregation of, of the events. Uh, in a normal IT network, there would also be uh, host-based ideas uh, systems available. Currently, in this scenario, we only have network-based idea systems, so we are only seeing the network uh, events but uh, the host-based idea system would also collect events from each of the computers without, uh, within the network. Uh, then again, in the OT network, it's uh, kind of rare to have that kind of capabilities as when deployed on the same machine, uh, there could be some effect on the OT process itself. So it's kind of un unwanted event. So uh, our idea system, is, uh, can you change the slide again? Uh, so the idea system is based on a security onion, which is a free and open source uh, Linux distribution for network monitoring. Uh, so it, uh, it's kind of easy to use. Uh, it can be set up in minutes, maybe half an hour for this kind of evaluation and testing mode, but it's also powerful enough uh, for enterprise level security monitoring. So if you don't yet have any kind of uh, intrusive detection system in your uh, network, this is an easy way to start. It has a good collection of open source tools uh, that can, can be used for first of all to collect information and then uh, also to view and analyze the data that is collected. Uh, we are now going to have a look on one of these tools called Kibana that uh, gives a dashboard to all the data that has been collected. Okay, you should now see my screen, hopefully. Yes. Uh, uh, this is to keep on dashboard we can see here for example that there have already been uh, about 70,000 uh, events not all of these events are of course malicious or related to attacks but most of them uh, represent the normal activity within the network we can see for example that there has been some uh, spike of events here and uh, 
type of data we have here, most of our at the moment related to Modbus. So they are probably happening in the OT network. Uh, we can see here that we have four sensors active in the system. In the left panel here, you can see that there are lots of information. There are different pages, for example, to the host-based ideas system, assuming that we had one, and the network ideas system. Uh, that uh, there is generic information about the connections happening within the network and different pages for all the protocols so that you could, for example, look if you are interested about some service that what kind of uh, information is collected about that cer certain service. If we go as an example to the connection page, we can see that there have been quite many connections happening. Most of them seem to be related at, at the moment to DNS. Uh, all in all, this information now presented in the panel is there's nothing much yet here because the attack simulation hasn't been run. But we can see uh, some events about the normal uh, network activity. Here we can, for example, see which host in the systems are making connections and to which host uh, they make the connections, uh, which services are used, so which network port, uh, ports are being used and then what kind of, uh, how much data is being sent. Of course, uh, we can go to more accurate descriptions by clicking some links here. Uh, if we go to the network intrusive detection tab, we can see that there already have been some events reported. Uh, this seem to be a generic policy related events, so probably changes in the DNS policies or something like that. And they are not attacks, but normal activity. And uh, there's also some other, yeah, for example, here we can see that this were actually DNS policy events. Uh, there are lots of panels for different kinds of information, but we don't have that much uh, data here. But we will come back to this after the attack simulation has been done. And uh, next we will look at the CM system. Uh, by others to see that what kind of information the CM can aggregate and uh, analyze from the events sent by the IDS system. Thank, thank you, Yuka. Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, you can now take over the uh, presentation. Hi, thanks. Uh, my name is Jesus Villalobos uh, from Atos. Um, I'm going to present you the, the Excel CM tool, uh, which is basically a, a CM. Um, we'll be receiving the, the events from the IDS sensor. Uh, if we take a look to the different capacities of the CM, if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, the Excel CM is a uh, distributed annual real-time uh, aggregation, dissemination, and processing of events. Uh, it's uh, it's based in basic. Uh, its main uh, responsibility is to correlate the different events from the different sensors from the application layer and generate from that uh, different alarms. Uh, the Excel CM has a high resilience, uh, resilience uh, which has been made by, by design, since it's working, uh, a, a very process from the CM is working in Apache Storm, which is an open source technology that is uh, really robust and guarantees the process of, the, of each message and also the, the stability of each process also. So it's uh, really robust from, from design. No? Uh, also, the Excel CM has the possibility to be deployed as a service, and it improves the, the detection of, of attacks uh, from the correlation across layers and integration of external information, that is, uh, this information received from the different sensors, uh, that in this demo we will see that it's a network sensor, but we can integrate it with different kinds of sensors. Uh, the main target users uh, are, are the organizations that need low-cost and highly uh, flexible CM solution. Uh, in the CM, if, uh, we have a, we go to the next slide, please. We have a main dashboard that is, is this one. 
uh, where we can uh, show to the operator an overview of the of the status of the security uh, in, uh, of the infrastructure. No? Uh, here we can see uh, a, a timeline with the uh, the amount of events that have been uh, detected by the CM, actually by the sensors, but received in the CM. We have some. We can see uh, some peaks in the chart, and also we have uh, in the left, in the top, uh, yeah, in the top corner, in the right. Sorry, we have another chart where we can see based on the on the risk of the of each alarm, we can see a, a level, no, uh, which is an average of the different uh, alarms that have been detected in the scene. So in this example, for example, we have a very high level, which means that the average of alarms actually in the same uh, has a very high risk. No? If we go to, to the next slide, we can uh, see in detail uh, the information that has been received from the sensors. The, those are the events. No? Uh, here we can see information about the, the time, of course. We see the signature, so it describes uh, what has been detected, and we have an associated risk. We also can see the, the IPs that have been involved and the ports. Uh, not necessarily those events uh, could mean that an attack is being performed, but uh, at least a suspicious activity. So uh, the same will correlate all those events and well, somehow we will filter it. We'll make a filter to those events. Um, in the next slide, we will see the result that are the alarms. This is the result from the correlation process. So this uh, somehow filters the big amount of events from the suspicious activity. And the CM uh, gives us uh, some information about what's happening. Uh, in fact, no. so it detects the, the attacks but based on the correlation of the of those events. Here we can see also a, a description uh, with the name of the alarm and associated risk that depending on the could depend on the importance of the asset that has been affected and will also depend on the nature of the of the attack uh, depending on the on, on their impact. No, actually. Uh, here we can also see the, of course, the, the affected IPs, the source and destination. The destination uh, usually is the affected asset and the source usually uh, refers to the attacker. So uh, this is the Excel scene we will see later in action. And now I uh, leave the floor to my colleague. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, now, uh, Jean-Baptiste Coré from Naval Group uh, will give us a, an introduction to the MISP tool. Uh... Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, can you, can you put a good slide, please? <clears throat> um, so, hello, everybody. I'm Jean-Baptiste Coé from the third of Naval Group France. I will present to you the MISP technical module so in first, we will talk about what is MISP and what it can do. Next, we talk about the synchronization between two MISP instances. And later, uh, we will do a demonstration about MISP event creation, some correlation events to refine our switches and bonus features. So <clears throat> um, what is MISP? MISP? MISP is for malware information sharing platform. Uh, it's an open source software that facilitates the exchange and sharing on threat of threat intelligence, indicators of compromise um, about targeting malware and attacks, financial fraud, or any intelligence within your community of trusted members. MISP sharing is a distributed model containing technical and non-technical information, which can be shared within closed, semi-private, or open communities. Exchanging such information should result in faster detection of, of targeted attack and improve the detection ratio um, with also reducing the number of false positives. 
all of these information are grouped by events. MISP allows us to locally create a published events. So what is an event? An event is a generic entity where you can enter IOCs like domains, EPs, IHs, attack matrices, tags, command categories, etc. Um, so can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, now concerning the synchronization between two MISPs, it is first necessary to add the organization of the MISP to communicate with the other one. Then you have to add a user of the of type sync user. Here, the sync user of the cyber range side will have the NAV cert organization. Um, an authentication key allow, allows the NAV cert to define the possibility action, so like pull and push. And by adding a server on the NAV cert um, with the authentication key and the correct organization. Um, with those manipulations, we now created a link between our two MISP instances, NAFCERT and CyberMar. We can pull and push some information and events from both sides. Uh, okay, thank you. That's all for the MISP overview. I'm going to hand over to Jonathan again. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. All right, uh, we'll see now the uh, more detailed uh, information on the cyber attack scenario we will be running today. So, uh, as a very quick overview, in a nutshell, the, uh, the point of uh, today's attack is to attempt to cut the power supply to the port and crypto lock uh, key machines throughout the network. Our uh, first target, uh, as we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, would be the Active Directory in the Windows Server area. Uh, so how are we going to uh, attack the network today? Uh, we are going to use uh, the spear phishing technique, uh, rather than uh, a uh, failure in the security of a uh, outward facing machine will be uh, contacting the OT manager of the uh, port in order to uh, uh, deliver our payload. Uh, when would the attack uh, happen? Uh, as most cyber attacks uh, like these, uh, it would be launched on a Friday afternoon uh, when uh, most people were not present uh, in the uh, uh, port uh, very soon. And uh, security oversight might not be as reactive as usual. And how, what exactly are we going to deliver? Uh, we're going to use a malware that's uh, triggered by a macro in a document. As a bonus uh, target uh, for the uh, uh, for the for the attack, uh, we could extract ransom from the port for recovering. Uh, for, to allow them to recover their, their data, and we could uh, leak further information uh, either for other actors or for uh, another attack in the future. So, uh, this is the uh, general description of uh, how a cyber attack uh, happens. Uh, today, during the demonstration, of course, we'll only show some. The first uh, two steps are reconnaissance and weaponization. Uh, then uh, we move on to uh, delivery, which is where we will start today. Then exploitation, lateral movement throughout the network in order to gain uh, administrator access, for example. Uh, then propagation to the rest of the machines in the network. And finally, uh, action on the final objective. First, a quick look on reconnaissance and weaponization. So reconnaissance basically uh, is the, the research and identification and selection of the targets. Uh, first, in the, uh, inside the network, uh, this could uh, be information due to an insider leak, for example, or a previous uh, breach. We'll also be uh, finding the, the name and surname of the, uh, the OT manager for the port. Uh, with uh, open source information techniques, for example. 
and uh, then we'll uh, find the email address of uh, this person within the port in order to send him a professional email with the uh, weapon. This in the real world can take hours to months, uh, uh, typically. Next step is weaponization. Uh, in this step, we, are, we pair uh, malware and exploits together into a deliverable payload. This could take hours to days or more, depending uh, on the uh, exact attack which is planned. Uh, if you are intending to make a very complex attack on a specific hardware, for example, you might have to develop some extra, uh, some extra malware. Moving on to the first step uh, that we'll be uh, showing today. Uh, a quick, uh, quick recap on phishing and spear phishing. Uh, phishing, as uh, most people have heard about, is a broad automated attack to many uh, different uh, people. Uh, spear phishing, on the contrary, targets a particular person or employee in, a, in the company, or potentially only uh, anyone in a everyone in a single company. Uh, and this is used to transmit the weapon to uh, the, uh, the email address of the person we are targeting in order to deliver the payload. This can take uh, just a few seconds, uh, as most uh, email sending is very easy. The next step is exploitation. In order to gain access in the uh, targeted network. Once the weapon has been delivered by email in the previous step, the code is triggered with a macro in the document. Usually, uh, attackers rely upon user execution to gain execution of the malware. Uh, this is, of course, uh, one of the uh, steps of uh, uh, one of the steps where the, the human is the weakest link. Uh, this is something that we obviously need to work on. Uh, and it can also be mitigated through technical measures. From here, the, uh, the malware that has been started uh, will uh, aim to get persistence in the uh, user's machine, either on the user or administrator level, depending on the user's rights on his own machine. In our case today, we'll have administrator level persistence immediately on the user machine uh, because uh, luckily, the, uh, the, uh, the user we have targeted happens to be an administrator also. But this is not required for the, for the malware to work. After this, uh, malware uh, will try to exploit a, uh, a security uh, issue on the Active Directory in order to gain an administrator account. So first it will check whether the machine that it has infected is part of a domain. It will fetch the information of the, the domain and the domain controller. It will check whether the CV that we'll be using uh, today, that is uh, zero logon, uh, is present in the uh, Active Directory machine and will launch the zero logon export. At the end of this, uh, this step, we will have uh, essentially access to an administrator account on the Active Directory. And this is the beginning of the end for the network. This will take a few seconds to maybe a minute. Once we have an uh, administrator access to the Active Directory, we start the lateral movement stage. This allows us to, uh, to execute on the, the Active Directory itself. For this step, we are using the SMB protocol, which is used for Windows shares, in order to la launch the payload on the domain controller from the originally infected machine. Then, the, uh, the payload we have launched on the Active Directory machine will uh, set itself up for persistence and insert itself into the session startup on the uh, Active Directory. This will take a few seconds also. Now for propagation, 
once we have access, uh, once we are executing on the Active Directory, the malware will propagate itself throughout all the machines on the domain with two techniques. First, Windows Remote Management, which allows us to uh, execute uh, software directly and immediately on all the connected machines in the domain. And uh, secondly, with a group policy object, uh, which will be set up as a persistent propagation method. For example, for machines which were not started at the time of the uh, attack. This can take minutes to hours, depending on the profile of the threat actor. Uh, today, it will be extremely quick. Finally, uh, action, the action on objective. Once the malware is propagated onto each machine in the network, as soon as it arrives on each, net, on each machine, it will uh, start checking whether they are, uh, it has arrived on the final uh, target machine. That is the SCADA supervision. Therefore, if we are on the SCADA supervision machine, the malware stops and reflashes the uh, OT hardware, that is the uh, PLC, which is controlling the um, electricity access, the electricity supply to the port. This will cut the electricity supply to the port and also render the uh, uh, supervision uh, machines uh, unable to reactivate the electricity supply. Then on all other machines and on this machine, once the SCADA attack has been run, the malware will launch the ransomware uh, CryptoLocker uh, module in order to lock the machines uh, to further hinder the port's uh, response efforts. This is also done on the Active Directory once the propagation step has been run. And this will take a few seconds to minutes. Okay, let's play the game. You can see here uh, some uh, bug icons that we have used uh, in order to add some uh, situational awareness to the uh, network topology. So the first yellow bug indicates uh, that we have detected that the uh, malware has propagated to a particular machine. In orange, uh, we're showing that the malware has gained a user level persistence in the machine. And in red, that the uh, malware has gained administrator level persistence in a particular machine. When the machines have also been crypto locked, we add the uh, padlock. Uh, in order to uh, to implement this uh, this situational awareness, we have uh, the leveraged uh, two facts. Uh, the first fact is that um, we uh, have the uh, control over the malware, so we know exactly how it behaves. So we have used the uh, Dia Team uh, Cyber Rangers APIs in order to detect on each machine. Uh, whether the malware is present and what uh, it has done. And then uh, using uh, another API, we change the icon in the display. So we are back now in the uh, network topology of the port that we are simulating. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, the uh, attackers will be accessing the port through the internet access here. So let's go to the uh, topology of the attackers. In this topology, we have set up a simulated internet system and the uh, attacker's machine is placed here. I will now enter inside this machine with a remote display in order to launch the attack. We have here the uh, document we have already prepared for the attack and we'll be sending the email to the OT manager who we have uh, determined to be uh, John Kedria. So, 
So here the attacker would uh, be able to uh, craft a, a convincing email to uh, to send to the uh, to the target, and would join the uh, the maldoc uh, for triggering the attack. Today we will not be uh, crafting a, a full email. We'll just send this email as is. We'll go back now to the uh, main uh, port topology. And I'll give a quick overview of uh, the machines in the, in the before state. First, we'll go into the uh, machine of the IoT manager on, in the user network. As we can see, we have received uh, right now the email that we just sent, but we'll not open it quite yet. So this machine, as we can see, is all right, and we have a normal desktop with all files accessible. Going back to the topology, we can go into the domain controller. And we can also see that we have access to a desktop and everything seems okay. Back to the topology, we'll go now into the, the main target for today. And we'll see the supervision of the uh, port's power supply. For today's exercise, we've recreated a, uh, a visualization uh, system for the uh, power supply and we have uh, the uh, various uh, PLCs in the system in their running state. We have the, the main uh, high voltage substation and then uh, the uh, five uh, low voltage uh, transformers and we can access each of these and see the uh, simulated uh, states and we can interact with the uh, system in order, for example, to deactivate uh, the power supply in an emergency, for example, manually. Obviously, this is not the, uh, uh, what you usually want to do, but it's not a problem because we are in a simulation. So we'll re-enable everything. You can also see the uh, low voltage transformer, uh, which also has its, uh, its measures shown here. And we have some curves indicating the, uh, the substation uh, statistics uh, and voltage and current. And you can see when we cut the power, it went to zero. Okay, going back to the home page, and now we can launch the attack, uh, or rather the uh, next stage of the attack, because the OT manager has just received an email and is about to open it. So, the OT manager has received this email and has been convinced by the, uh, by the text and will open the security notification. So this document uh, is one of the typical ways of uh, fooling a user into launching a malware by posing as a uh, legitimate uh, document from their uh, uh, OT technology provider, for example. Could be, of course, any other uh, technology in the in the network. And uh, thankfully, there are some protections in uh, Microsoft Office, for example, which uh, avoid the automatic uh, running of malware. So we are trying to convince the uh, the manager to launch the content. In this case, 
he needs some more training uh, because he has been fooled. We will activate the content. And from now on, everything will go very fast. So on activating the content, the macro immediately uh, uh, goes to collect the malware from uh, the main malware, which is not in the document, and runs it. We have some uh, windows, uh, which are not very visible here, uh, that starts, which are the actual malware. The logs are not very interesting for us today, but um, could possibly be completely hidden, but it's fun. In the topology, we can see now with the situational awareness that the, uh, the entry manager's machine is completely infected already. And the domain controller has traces of a lateralization. The malware has arrived on, the, on this machine, but has not yet been triggered. This will not take very long now. As you can see, the malware has now uh, launched and gained administrative assistance on the Active Directory machine and will be very soon propagating throughout the network. The propagation is now started. It's currently running one machine at a time. We have, access, we have uh, infected the servers, are infecting the user machines. And we have now arrived in the supervision machine in the network. The, super, the malware from the supervision machine has uh, detected the IP addresses of the, uh, the PLCs and has uh, stopped all our virtual PLCs and is now working on the physical PLC to stop the supply in the substation. We have now, the situational awareness has now told us that the substation uh, PLC has also been uh, affected. Let's go and see the uh, supervision uh, machine to see what the dashboard looks like. We can see in our supervision that the, uh, it is not capable of communicating with any of the uh, PLCs anymore. Okay, into the substation, we don't have, uh, don't have any uh, measures anymore, and all of the controls are inactive. This, of course, is because we have completely refreshed the uh, uh, PLC with a non-functional uh, and non-communicating uh, firmware. The uh, virtual PLCs, which we're using for the uh, low-voltage transformers, have also been affected in the same way. And in the curves, we can see that the data has been interrupted. We can go back now to the, to the main topology and we'll have a quick look at the original user machine. And if we hide this document, We can see that uh, all the files on, on the desktop have been locked and a uh, readme, readme file has been uh, placed there. Uh, in this case, it is very simple. It is simply requesting uh, money or beer for the attackers. We can also see the same in the Active Directory machine. And in the supervision dashboard, if we close, if we close the dashboard, all the files have also been locked. In this case, the screen, the uh, background has not been changed, but the readme is also present, and the uh, the files on the desktop have been locked. Okay, the game is now over for the, uh, for the, uh, the main port uh, network. Uh, the uh, power, uh, we have managed to cut the power to the, uh, to the port, although it's simulated, of course. And uh, we have cryptolocked all the machine, all the Windows machines in the network.
We can now move on to uh, the results of the that we can see in the monitoring network uh, as a blue team, for example, uh, starting with the VTT for the IBS. The, uh, the IDS is in this part of the network, which we'll go into right now. This is the subnetwork, and the security admin machine is here. And Yuka, I think, will be uh, sharing his screen as he did earlier, right now. When you are ready, Yuka. Okay, thank you. So let's go right back to the uh intrusive detection system and the Kipono. Uh, here we can see that uh, the number of log events that we have is uh, quite much higher than it was before the attack simulation. Uh, as I said earlier, not all of these events are related to the uh, malicious activity or the attack itself, but most of the, the events are probably uh, some kind of normal network activity. Anyhow, this information is something uh, that can be first of all uh, used by the system administrator to uh, detect the attack in the first place and then also by the incident responders uh, when they are trying to figure out what has happened and what kind of attack there has been. If we now go to the uh, network intrusion detection tab, we can see here that the uh, alert count from the IDS system is quite much higher. Uh, it has actually uh, also recognize uh, some events that it sees as potential exploits. So it might be that, that they are not all exploits, but uh, that's how they are labeled here. Uh, there are quite many events. We can see that the event count is uh, very high. Uh, this doesn't actually mean uh, that there have been that many attacks, but uh, there have been uh, events in the network that match some of the uh, detection rules that we have. So they match some, some kind of indicator of compromise. For example, it might be that we have uh, multiple events from the same action during the attack, but they are related to di different network packages. Uh, I'm not going to go any further details here on these attacks because uh, it's actually uh, what the CM system does best is aggregation this, uh, aggregating this kind of uh, ideas data uh, to more meaningful information for the defenders. So we're next going to look uh, how the same system look, uh, s uh, how the attack look, looked into the same system. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, okay. So this is the, the Excelsior dashboard. Uh, here, actually, we can see now that the, that the alarm threat level has been increased. And uh, this is the main panel where we can also see a timeline where we can see that a uh, amount of events have been received. So let's see here in the events panel what has happened. Uh, here we can see the different events that have been received from the IDS sensor from the security union. Uh, here we can see that the first kind of event, for example, has been like uh, an, ex an executable has been downloaded. So this is suspicious. And we can see here the different, we have multiple of them, and then we can see a different activity. As we can see, uh, there is a such amount of, of events. So we can select a different view. For example, we can select this view where we can see the different kind of events that we have received. Here we see the different signatures of events and the total amount of uh, events that have been received during this period. So, uh, for example, uh, we see here a zero logon attack, uh, some activity in the Matbos, 
and stop command, we see also the adult load of an executable. Uh, we see also activity in the SMBB uh, protocol uh, and different activity. No? Uh, so how can we help the, the operator to understand all those things? So we have here a different view uh, where we can see the, the events in a timeline. Uh, the first events, okay, there are more of them. We cannot see them, but uh, there are more of them. And the first activity that we can see is the SMEV activity. Uh, this regards to the phase of the attack of the um, propagation. Uh, trying, here we see the, the serologon attack trying to uh, to gain access to the domain controller. Uh, this attack is uh, serologon, we can see here more information. And once the it has gained access, the attacker has gained access to the domain controller, we can see here the activity regarding to the uh, to the reprogrammation, to the reflash, to the PLCs. We see the stop command uh, to those PLCs to reflash the it and then the, the start command. So with this uh, timeline, we can understand uh, easier the what are the phases of the of the attack. Additionally, we can check the alarms panel where we can uh, see what are the, the things that have been correlated. We can see two of them. We can see the zero logon attack and with the CV code related to it with a high risk because uh, it has been, uh, it has a, a high score from CV details, for example. We can uh, check this CV and we'll see that uh, it has an, a high impact. And then we have the alarm of the, the stop to the, to the PLCs that this has a lower risk because maybe necessarily should not be an attack, but it's uh, probably a really unwanted uh, uh, action. No? So has a lower risk, but uh, in any case, it's also uh, our, uh, alerting the, the operator about this activity. Here we can see the uh, the IPs that have been affected. And if we go back to the events panel, uh, we can check uh, the IP addresses that have been involved in the in the attack. So here, for example, we can see this external IP. So uh, from the point of view of the operator who is uh, analyzing this uh, this attack. Uh, this IP will be important to uh, to use it as an IOC to check in, in different tools. We will see later uh, in the MISP uh, how we can use these, these IOCs. So uh, this is the, uh, the situational awareness, uh, what the, the operator can see about the, the, whole, the whole attack, no? about the, the infrastructure. So now I leave the floor back to my colleague, Jonathan. Thank you, Jesus. So now I'll be uh, moving on to the, to the point of view of uh, the, uh, uh, what we can see in MISP to help us uh, counter this kind of attack. And so this will be again presented by uh, Jean-Baptiste from Naval Group. Uh, you can take the floor now, uh, Jean-Baptiste, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, up, yes, um, first screen. Can you see my, my screen? Yes? Yes. <clears throat> okay, good. <clears throat> so um, for our demonstration, we have two MISP instances. Uh, on the left side, the MISP instance of NavCert, so you can see the logo of Navel Group. And on the right side, the MISP instance of the cyber range for CyberMar. Uh, you can check the logo too. Um, as we said before, let's let us assume the following scenario. So a fraudulent email was received by an, an OT operator and has been opened this 
email contains a malicious attachment, a word document with a macro. So if we consider recent facts, we can imagine a zero legon type, type exploitation based on a crypto locker. Uh, the zero legon exploit gives domain administrator access with persistence on the infected machine and also notifies the CNC server. Uh, let us admit this attack was difficult to perceive because it was very targeted, spear phishing. Uh, however, we have the possibility of doing specific research um, related to different IOCs, uh, so like CNC domains, IPs, ashes of malwares, uh, to identify the real impact of the threat and to take the right sequestration measures to stop the spread. Okay, so uh, if the NAFSERT MISP hold these IOCs linked to a zero logon and share these IOCs. Then all the other connected MISPs, including CyberMar, will be able to anticipate this type of threat by adding detection elements in correlation with those IOCs. <clears throat> so now let's add an event in the now third side. Um, so, sorry, in the left side. Um, so, in event action, we can add event. Uh, you can choose the date, the distribution, the threat level analysis. Um, so we will choose connected communities and we will put demonstration uh, zero lagoon cybermar. Okay, so I submit and now <clears throat> uh, we, you can see now, now the event is created all information, so the date, the distribution, state of analysis, tags, creator, number of attributes. Um, so for the moment, uh, this event is not published <clears throat> and we can add some IOCs uh, if we want. Uh, in first, we will add a tag uh, there. So you have a tag collections, custom tag and all tags. Uh, so in all tags, um, I added some um, local tags like high, low, medium, and info. Um, it respects the, um, the GLP taxonomy. So it's a crypto locker. Uh, we will take the hard submit. And this tag will be um, synchronized with all of the other MISPs. <clears throat> so, um, in an event, we should add attributes. You can add by you can add it by IOCs. So in raw text uh, here, mm, like this, you have um, a free text um, field, and we will take the same IP we had just before in the ID, uh, IDS and CM presentation. So. This IP was revealed before for simulate the IP of a CNC where the malware has been downloaded. So we can imagine this command and control server is running attacks like crypto leaking or attacks on SCADA systems and exploit the zero logon vulnerability. Um, so we submit it um, and we can just check is, if it's a good category, the good type, uh, so IP, DST, and we submit attribute. Now we have our IOC. Um, you can put uh, a lot of IOCs and we can publish the event. <clears throat> okay. So now the event is published. And if we actualize the other side, we have a new, a new event on the CyberMar, uh, this one. So demonstration zero logo cybermar. Um, if we want to make a research um, to, to to search just one IOC uh, and all events in correlation with it, you can go in event action <clears throat> and search attributes. Uh, for this example, we will put the same IP, and when we submit. You can see the the ID event. So we had a, a lot of events just before, and now we just have this one. Okay. So this is a nine event, and when you click on, you can see the same um, the same options, uh, the date, 
everything. <clears throat> okay, so you, you you can make a lot of research uh, like um, um, a, a hash, an IP, a domain, everything what you can do. <clears throat> so we have both of uh, our, our MIPS. They are synchronized. Um, now let's talk about uh, bonus features. So first, this is Galaxy. Uh, we don't have a Galaxy in our example, but uh, Galaxies in MISP are a method used to express a large object called cluster that can be attached to MISP events or attributes. <clears throat> um, a cluster can be composed of one or more events um, and elements are expressed as key values. There are default vocabularies available in MISP um, Galaxy, but those can be overwritten, replaced, or updated as you wish. Vocabularies are from exist existing standards like uh, sticks, various attacks, uh, attack, sorry, MISP and, and so on, um, or custom ones you only use for your organization. Um, and existing clusters and vocabularies can be used uh, as is or as a template. MISP distribution can be applied to each cluster to permit a limited or broaded or broader distribution schemes. And finally, the objective is to have a common set of clusters for organizations starting analysis, but that can be uh, that can be expanded to localized localized information, which which is not shared or additional information that can be shared. The second bonus feature is a taxonomy. Uh, you can fi find a list of taxonomies in event action. Uh, I will put full screen again. Uh, so you have a lot of uh, taxonom taxonomies. So in MISP 2.4, uh, a flexible mechanism has been introduced to support various taxonomy of classification. Uh, so you can access the taxonomy by going into event action like I did. Um, so we, you have a complete list of the available taxonomy uh, PDF uh, on the MIPO project website. Um, and these taxonomies can be used in MISP uh, as local or distributed tags or in other tool willing to share common taxonomies among security information sharing tools. For example, um, we have a circle taxonomy. Uh, it's a simple shame for incident classification and area topic where the incident took place. Um, we have another example about some malware uh, classification based on different tech categories and based on sense white paper about malware. Um, uh, okay. <clears throat> Okay, so to conclude, this module complements the cyber range. It is there to add elements related to threat anticipation and proactive defense. Thank you all for listening. If you have any question, I will try to answer as well as possible. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. Uh, we'll move now on to uh, feedback and comments by uh, Pablo of uh, Foundation Valley Supports. Uh, Pablo, do you want to take the floor? Yes, I can share. Or, or, or just you have in the next slide. You can take the floor if you are ready. Okay. So thank you all of you for this nice, dem nice demonstration. And before finishing, I would like to highlight the most relevant conclusions we have seen. Uh, today in this demonstration, we, we saw a realistic situation that could happen in any kind of uh, infrastructure or even critical infrastructure. And you have seen the importance of cybersecurity as a single action from one employee can compromise the whole infrastructure, and in this case, uh, cause a power shutdown in, in all the ports. 
And this uh, situation could have a big economic impact, at least in a port infrastructure, but in all kinds of industries. And the attack could be also uh, not only in the port authority, as in this case, also in any, in any company in the, in the port environment, such as a terminal operator, a shipping line, and could have a, also a big uh, impact. In, in these cases, uh, these companies uh, usually have auxiliary uh, generators, but this kind of server incidents could need from all two days to recover. So maybe we, we could have a problem. And finally, I would like also to mention the importance of the cyber ranges, where we can deploy all real infrastructure as we, has, uh, we have seen today, in order to test all kinds of vulnerabilities and uh, real cyber attacks in order to avoid them. And also uh, use it to training all the personnel because as we have seen, cybersecurity is a goal that uh, all, of you, all of us uh, have to achieve. So that's all. My first, my last slide is what we mentioned before. We would like to invite you to help us completing a short uh, questionnaire in order to get feedback from you. We will use this information to improve our uh, CyberMap platform development and also for planning uh, next uh, pilots. It will take only about five minutes. And you can see here the link and also my colleague uh, will share in the, in the chat and also will be sent by email after this uh, event. I would like to thank you in advance uh, for your support with uh, this questionnaire. And also thank you very much for your attention. Now we are going to move on to the Q&A session. So all the questions that you have written in the in the chat or the ones you can write right now, we will try to, to answer them. I'll just show quickly the, that the machines have uh, restarted and they are not uh, locked anymore. So we are logging in again as the, the original uh, person who opened the, the Maldoc. And everything is uh, back to normal. Uh, and uh, we have the, the, the original desktop and access to all the files. And in the topology, uh, the virtual PLCs have all restarted and are not infected anymore. However, the physical PLC is still shown as infected because uh, as a physical device, it's much harder to, to reset. Of course, uh, it's possible, but uh, it takes much longer. Uh, in the supervision, this machine is also uh, functional again. Yeah. To add here that you can contact us uh, via our social media accounts uh, that you can see in uh, uh, in this slide and uh, in the email uh, presented. And also you can visit our website and uh, uh, learn about our uh, uh, plans and our vision and our uh, results. And also subscribe to our newsletter to uh, keep you updated of our activities. Thank you very much. Uh, so, if uh, there is no other questions or comments, uh, I believe that uh, we can uh, uh, say that uh, our event has uh, has finished, uh, and we would like to to thank you everyone uh, very much for uh, attending this event, which, uh, as I said in the start of the meeting, is. Uh, uh, really, really important for us as a first milestone in order to demonstrate the, the work that has been done uh, 
uh, in these first uh, 15 months of the of the project so uh, as Vasiliki said uh, we would like to to invite you in uh, following our project activities and uh, through uh, through that to uh, uh, allow us to uh, communicate with you any updates and uh, also updates on the next uh, activities, workshops and uh, training activities that would be helping in the context of, uh, of the project. Uh, thank you very much for joining and we hope that uh, we will uh, have the opportunity to interact with you in the next uh, activities of our project. And a great uh, thank, uh, thanks to, to all uh, Cybermar uh, partners for uh, this great demonstration. Thank you, Lefteros. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, all the partners and the attendees, and uh, especially uh, VTT and Atos. Uh, uh, for the uh, monitoring uh, machines and uh, Naval Group for the for the CM and the MISP machine. And uh, yes, yeah, so a special thanks to, to all the partners uh, and uh, our team here uh, at Dear Team, who you've not all seen, of course, but uh, also had a, a big hand in uh, developing the, uh, the scenario and the topology and uh, all the rest of the partners. Thank you very much, everyone. So, uh, till the next time, thank you very much for, for attending this meeting and uh, we hope that we will have the opportunity to, to interact with, uh, with you uh, in uh, the near future. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.